want to share that. But we made a conscious decision that we would start to say to them, okay, well, I will tell you about me personally if you talk about the fact that there's not an investigation. Well, I'm joined right now by four women who lost their husbands in the attacks of... Kristen Breitweiser is one of four New Jersey widows who lost... These women banded together after their husbands were killed, and now they're leading a campaign to find out exactly how did 9-11 happen. And finally, the media began to report on our activities, um, not just the activities of the administration. Look forward to the president and the vice president going to both come in there... To, to go on any show is station. not easy, so but you on. needed the public pressure in order to make anything happen in Washington. I mean, they need huge public pressure to move them. President Bush signed legislation today creating an independent commission to investigate the September 11th attack on America. President Buckling under pressure, the White House was finally agreeing to a deal. But in a stunning series of revelations, it soon appeared that the White House was stacking the odds against an investigation it had not wanted in the first place. The president named a supporter, Dr. Henry Kissinger, Secretary of State in the Nixon and Ford administrations, to head the panel. He has a penchant for secrecy, which is not what's needed here. There are questions about his role in Vietnam, his role in the coup in uh, Chile. Several family members approached Kissinger and requested a meeting at his office in New York. Prior to the meeting, Kristen Breitweiser conducted a thorough investigation of Kissinger's potential conflicts of interest. Probably much to the chagrin of some of the people in the room, Lori asked some very pointed questions. Would you have any Saudi American clients that you would like to tell us about? And he was very uncomfortable, kind of twisting and turning on the couch. And then she asked whether he had any clients by the name of bin Laden. And he just about fell off his couch. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger stepped down from the position Friday. We thought the meeting went well. I wouldn't want to be in the way of some of these families. I mean, there. <laughs> Kissinger was soon replaced by Tom Keene, a former New Jersey governor, and former Congressman Lee Hamilton, who had chaired the House Intelligence Committee. The remaining eight commissioners were all former D.C. insiders and lawyers, evenly split between Republicans and Democrats. Remember, in the 90s, they spent $100 million investigating Clinton's sexual exploits a hundred million dollars and they first allocated only three million dollars to investigate the murder of three thousand people the budget was eventually raised to fourteen million but the investigation was also given less time than they had wanted a year and a half to monitor the commission leading victim relatives established the family steering committee the group provided the commissioners with hundreds of well-researched questions for which they expected answers That's the official start of our first public hearing of what is going to be an extraordinarily difficult and important job. In we March of 2003, 441 days after the attacks, the official investigation began in New York. Mindy Kleinberg from September 11th Advocates. On the morning of September 11th, my three-year-old son Sam and I walked Jacob 10 and Lauren 7 to the bus stop at about 8.40 a.m. Brad was 24 years old and the oldest of our three sons. Family steering committee Jacob members were among the first to testify before the commission. Hey mom, it's Brad. I uh, just wanted to call and let you know. I'm sure that you've heard, there were, or maybe you haven't heard, that a plane crashed into World Trade Center 1. Um, we're fine, we're in World Trade Center 2. I'm uh, you know, obviously alive and well over here, but uh, obviously a pretty scary experience. I saw a guy fall out of probably the 91st story uh, all the way down. So, <clears throat> you're welcome to give a call here. I think uh, we'll be here all day. I'm not sure if, uh, if the firm's going to shut down for the day or what, but uh, give me a call back later. I called Dad to let him know. Love you. Welcome, Mayor Michael Bloomberg of the City of New York. From the outset, many families were concerned by how the investigation was being conducted. 
we begged and pleaded that people should be put under oath. At the beginning, they were not. We'll describe our city government. As the hearings progressed, the families were becoming more and more frustrated by what they perceived as softball questioning from the commissioners. I've appreciated already his remarks. You know, we have certain questions that we, the families, wrote for each of the people that were coming to testify today. And the questions weren't asked. Complete waste of time. It was a, a bunch of people throwing accolades at each other and asking the same questions one after the other. Skirting around issues, not being uh, defined enough in their questions. It's a stonewall. It's a cover-up. As far as I'm concerned, I'm very bitter. I'm very angry. Still, no one was prepared for what they then uncovered about Philip Zelikow, the executive director of the 9-11 Commission. He who had the power to say where the investigation was going, who would be interviewed, what would go into the 9-11 Commission report, what wouldn't. We have found out that he not only served on the tra transition team of the uh, Bush administration, that he was a person who wrote a draft memo for the setup of the Bush administration's National Security Council, that he was an individual who wrote the preemptive war strategy that was eventually used for the war in Iraq, that he is a close friend of Condoleezza Rice's. We want him to resign. Philip Zelikow refused to resign, and Chairman Keene dismissed the family's concerns over conflicts of interest. Nearly a year in, the Commission had only received a small amount of the documents that they had requested. At this point, what we have is uh, uh, literally hundreds of boxes of materials that have come into the Commission, and we have not sorted through that. They gave them boxes and boxes of documents, but not left pertinent documents out. A deal announced yesterday between the White House and the Commission investigating the September 11th attacks is proving to be rather controversial. Under the agreement, only certain members of the Commission will be allowed to review classified documents from the White House, and their notes will be subject to administration review. I mean, I'm a member of the Commission. The President has said only a minority of the Commission can see a minority of the documents, and then they have to clear what they're going to say to the rest of the Commission with the White House. The only two Commission members allowed direct access to the documents? Jamie Gorlick, the Deputy Attorney General under President Clinton, and Philip Zelikow. I felt that the fix was in at that point in time. The majority of the Commission felt that it was better to see uh, these documents uh, rather than take a chance in not seeing them at all. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. This is important. We cannot do our responsibilities if we don't have all of us access to all the documents we need, including what's in the White House. And with the investigation nearing its deadline, the President, Vice President, and National Security Advisor were still refusing to testify publicly. Yet few Americans were aware of the family's plight. Up till then, the hearings had received only minimal coverage. Suddenly, that all changed. In testimony before the 9-11 Commission later this week, and in a new book to be published tomorrow against all enemies, Clark will tell the story of what happened behind the scenes at the White House before, during, and after September 11th. To the loved ones of the victims of 9-11, your government failed you. Those entrusted with protecting you failed you, and I failed you. Mr. Clark is the first person that has apologized to the families. Clark's testimony provided the families with the timely leverage they needed to increase public pressure on reluctant White House witnesses. The Bush administration will allow National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice to testify publicly before the 9-11 Commission. For President Bush, it was a dramatic reversal. I've ordered this level of cooperation because I consider it necessary to gaining a complete picture of the months... And even the president and vice president agreed to meet with the commission, but with a catch. They insisted on meeting together behind closed doors and not under oath. Why are you and the Vice President insisting on appearing together before the 9-11 Commission? Because the 9-11 commission, commission wants to ask us questions. That's why we're meeting, and I look forward to meeting with them and answering their questions.